Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about peripheral line associated bloodstream infection, that is, PLAPSI. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What is meant by PLAPSI? Bloodstream infection associated with erythema, swelling, or pus at a current or former peripheral intravenous site without another identifiable source for bacteremia is called PLAPSI. Around 10 to 50 percentage of Staphylococcus aureus bloodstream infections were developed from peripheral vascular access devices. Peripheral intravenous catheter infection. To know this in detail, we should know about chain of infection. First comes pathogens. The common pathogens responsible for this are Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Enterococcus, Pseudomonas, E. coli, Klebsiella, Candida, etc. Next comes reservoir in chain of infection. A reservoir is a host which allows the pathogen to live and possibly grow and multiply. Here, the reservoirs are resident microbial flora that is present on patient's skin, environment, equipment, IV solutions, transient flora which is present on healthcare workers' hands. Next comes portal of exit in the chain of infection. This refers to the route by which the infectious microorganisms escape or leave the reservoir. Here, the portal of exit is through bodily fluids that is blood and broken skin. Next comes mode of transmission in the chain of infection. Here mode of transmission is through direct contact and indirect contact. Direct contact is through healthcare workers hands and indirect contact is through contaminated equipments, drugs and fluids. Next comes portal of entry in the chain of infection. Here it is based on route of entry of bacteria that is extraluminal and intraluminal. Let's look at this in detail. Extraluminal where bacteria migrate from skin along the catheter tract. Intraluminal where bacteria migrate from the catheter hub to the lumen and becomes embedded in this protein sheath. In extraluminal, the insertion of a vascular access device causes a break in the skin which exposes the patient to increased risk for local, systemic and bloodstream infections. The microorganism found on the patient's skin can colonize the catheter when the device enters the skin during insertion. In intraluminal, microorganisms can colonize from a contaminated hub or from a vascular access device when these devices are accessed or manipulated for medication administration and cleaning. Microorganisms can colonize also through contaminated fluids and medications that are administered through the vascular access devices. Vascular access devices infection also includes colonization from contaminated infusion solution and the hematogenous spread of microorganisms from a distant site of infection. In chain of infection, next comes the host. Here the host includes immunocompromised patients, patients with chronic diseases, peripheral intravascular catheter antibiotics, high-risk medications, surgery, age where the risk is for old age, vascular access devices in situ and increased average length of stay. So far we have discussed about chain of infection in infection of peripheral intravascular catheter. Next comes prevention of PLAPSI, PLAPSI bundle. Bundle is a set of evidence-based interventions related to disease process that when executed together results in better outcomes than when implemented individually. In PIVC bundle, it includes insertion bundle and maintenance bundle. First comes insertion bundle. Check the clinical indication for IV cannulation. Cannulation should be done only when it is really necessary. Next is select appropriate vein and gauze size based on indications. Next is hand hygiene and wear personal protective equipments. Follow aseptic non-touch techniques. During insertion, key parts of the cannula are protected from contamination. Make sure a new cannula is used for each attempt. 
Next is site preparation with 2% chlorhexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol. Make sure the area gets dried before insertion of the cannula. Check the backflow and flush the peripheral venous catheter with normal saline. Apply sterile transparent dressing to secure the PIVC. Next, use add-on device with closed system. Closed system prevents backflow and is the easy way of administering medication. Next comes documentation. Document the date of insertion, reason for insertion and the catheter size and the site. Next comes maintenance bundle. First comes hand hygiene and wearing appropriate personal protective equipments. Follow aseptic non-touch techniques. Check the need for IV cannula in every shift and remove when it is no longer needed. Inspect the site for signs of infection using VIP scoring. That is nothing but visual infusion phlebitis scoring. Replace the cannula at the first indication of infusion phlebitis that is stage 2 on the VIP score. Make sure the dressing is intact. Scrub the hub before cannula access. Let's discuss about scrub the hub. What is hub? Hub refers to the end of the catheter that connects to the blood lines or infusions or cap. Catheter hub is a known source for catheter related bloodstream infections and needless connectors are sources for microbial contamination. Scrub the hub or ports rather than wiping it. Scrub the hub with chlorhexidine with alcohol or 70% alcohol prepads or swaps. Where do we scrub? The areas we need to scrub are IV port, IV extension port, 3-way extension port, all catheter hub, injection ports into bags or bottles, needleless connectors. The duration of scrubbing is 15 seconds and duration for drying it will be 15 seconds. When do we need to scrub the hub? Prior to accessing the line to administer medications, fluids, flushes or blood draws. In maintenance bundle next comes replacing the IV administration set and extension set as per the local policy. In case of blood administration and total parental nutrition administration, the administration set should be discarded immediately and other administration sets as per the institutional policy. Use extension set with closed system. Next is cannula replacement which is in 72 hours or as clinically indicated or as per the institutional policies. Next is Flush the line before and after the injections. Let's discuss about peripheral intravenous catheter flushing and locking. Flushing is recommended to promote and maintain patency and prevent the mixing of incompatible medications and solutions. Sterile 0.9% sodium chloride or heparin sodium solution is used for flushing. Flush catheters immediately after placement, prior to and after fluid infusion or injection. Line should be flushed and locked at least once in a shift when it is not in use. Use 10 ml syringe to avoid excessive pressure and catheter rupture. Follow appropriate technique for flushing and locking. Here we have shown the ACL techniques of flushing and locking where A is assess the status and function of the vascular access device to confirm location and patency. C for clear medications and solutions from the vascular access device to avoid any incompatibilities. L for lock the vascular access device during periods of non-use to ensure patency. Next comes documentation. Document the date of removal and reason of removal for the intravenous catheter. So far we have discussed about the maintenance bundle of PLAPSI. Next comes assessment of PIVC. Assess for catheter position, patency, occlusion, phlebitis that is inflammation of the vein, infiltration, extravasation. A serious complication is the inadvertent administration of a solution or medication into the tissue surrounding the intravascular catheter. When it is a non-vesicant solution or medication, it is called infiltration. When it is a vesicant medication, it is called extravasation. 
As is for systemic infection where patients may develop rigor, fever, tachycardia, hypotension, etc. Here you go with plapsy. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.